Hearing in the spirit is not a skill to be acquired. It's a sense to be sharpened. You already have the sense. You are already hearing God. The Holy Spirit is already speaking to you right here, right now. He's saying something to you. There are the voices of self, Satan, secular, and spirit. Secular is the voices of culture, people, family members, anyone who speaks just according to the thinking of the world. Satan, obviously we know, questions the word and contradicts the word constantly. We know that sometimes self can speak to us things that are random. You can have a thought that's just kind of a neutral thought, and that's understandable. We all have those. Uh, and then there's the spirit. This is the speaking of truth. And so the key is not in getting the Holy Spirit to speak to you. The key is in silencing the satanic, the secular, and self. And you do that, all that's left is the Spirit, and you hear them loud and clear. So how do we do this? Number one, the Word. Please hear me now. Insisting upon adherence to the Word, insisting upon biblical accuracy is not religious. And I think we have to get that out of our heads. This idea that, oh, you know, you're, 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 you're going to the word, that's head knowledge. That's, that's philosophy. That's, that's just the wisdom of man. No, my friend, the word was inspired by God. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to what? To teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong. And you felt that correction before, I'm sure. And teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. So we understand the Bible, the word of God, is inspired by the Holy Spirit. Every word. This is why be very careful of anyone who questions foundational teachings of the word. Be careful of yourself even. Watch out for your own reasoning when you have to bend things in scripture to fit your opinion. Well, I don't know. Let me, let me, let me just kind of shift that meaning there just a tad. Not, not completely. Or you know what? Let me, let me question that word there. Let me, let me just kind of shift the definition of that word. So it seems a little more consistent. You do that, you're going to end up in confusion and torment of the mind. So the word must be the foundation. Get it out of your head that the word is religious. Get it out of your head that the word contradicts the Holy Spirit. You want real power. You want to walk in the presence of the Holy Spirit in such a way that your life will mark the nations? Then get in the Word. The Word is the foundation of our understanding of the voice of the Holy Spirit. That is the safety net. You want a word from God? I got a secret for you. You want a word from God? Open your Bible. If you're serious about hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit, you'll get serious about reading the Word. Don't tell me you want to hear the Holy Spirit and you're not even opening your Bible. Don't tell me you want a word from God and you won't open your Bible. You want to be spoon-fed maybe by others. Just speak specifically to my situation so that I don't have to go digging through the word to find the truth that applies to my specific situation. You just give it to me in bite-sized pieces. No, my friend, we must dive into the word. We must receive the word. We must have a rich knowledge of the word. And that knowledge is set on fire by the Holy Ghost. Revelation is knowledge set on fire by the Holy Ghost. Look at the scripture. Read of all the different people that God used. They had sharp intellectual minds that the Holy Ghost set on fire. They had, they had an ability to reason according to the scriptures and the Holy Spirit gave them boldness and authority and clarity and peace because of that adherence to the word of God itself. So if you're serious about hearing God, you got to get serious about the word. Now, as I said, the word is the foundation. I'm going to give you four keys here. The word is the foundation to knowing the voice of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the Holy Spirit will never contradict the word. That written word is there for your guidance. And so you have this foundation now. Here's the word. And that serves as my grounding. That serves as my, my stability. Well, Jesus said you build your house upon the sand. That's like building on your own understanding or without his words. You build your house upon the rock, that's like building on his word. So that when the storms come, by the way, he did not say if the storms come. He said, when the storms come, you'll be standing. Why? Because you built on a solid foundation, the word. And so we build our lives upon the words of Christ. That's not a contradiction to the spirit. The spirit works with the word. It's not religious to study the word. It's not religious. And, and anyone who thinks that is going to get stuck in immature Christianity. You're going, to be, you're going to be a baby Christian all your life. And I'm not saying this to be condescending. I'm saying this because we need to wake up. I'm not saying this to tear you down. I'm saying this to wake you up. 
I want to help you grow past certain things. And if you're intimidated by the word, that's okay. So was I. If you're, if you're nervous about, well, maybe, maybe I won't get anything really out of it and it kind of intimidates me. I don't really understand all that. Just start reading it. I was at a place in my life where I didn't know anything about the scripture. And I had to really dig in and discipline and, 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 and make use of what God had put before me. And that begins with simple obedience. So the word, now watch this, serves as a foundation. And then number two is wisdom. Please hear what I'm about to say. But before you do, I want you to write in the comment section. If you'll commit to the word, just type it in the comment section. Just put the word, exclamation point. So the word becomes the foundation now. And then what begins to happen when you read the word? When I begin to know the word, suddenly there's this root of wisdom that begins to take hold in my life. I read the word, my mind's being washed, my mind's being renewed. I'm beginning to think like God thinks. I'm beginning to understand his nature. I'm beginning to understand his ways. Now watch this. Once I know the word now, then wisdom begins to naturally follow. Now wisdom is how the Holy Spirit speaks to your spirit. So the word, that's just the Holy Spirit speaking directly to you through the word. But wisdom is the Holy Spirit speaking to your spirit. Romans chapter 12, verse two says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing, you may discern what is the will of God. This is so powerful. What is good and acceptable and perfect? Well, how do I discern the will of God? How do I discern what he's saying? I do so by renewing my mind. How do I renew the mind? My friend, it's the word. As you read his word, the mind is being renewed. James 1, 5, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking him. So the word becomes the foundation. And as you become a person of the word, wisdom naturally results. Why? Because that word is getting into your spirit. And when the word gets into your spirit, suddenly you begin to think like God thinks. Suddenly you begin to reason like God reasons. Suddenly you begin to think and reason and believe and behave according to the Holy Spirit's guidance because your mind is being renewed by the word. So the word is that foundation and now wisdom acts as the structure. Okay, so you have, you have the foundation of the word and then wisdom becomes the beginning stages of that structure. And that structure goes into place based on the word. So wisdom is the Holy Spirit speaking directly to your spirit. It is this, this pure overflow of the directions of God. It is a purposeful pull on your life. You just kind of have this natural inclination in understanding what God wants you to do in any given situation. Why? Because you become familiar with his nature. When you know the word of God, you understand his will. And as you begin to become more familiar with his will, now you begin to become more familiar with his ways. The word shows you his will and that begins to develop wisdom in you. Wisdom shows you his ways. First the word, foundation, then the structure, wisdom, then there's the whisper. And this is the Holy Spirit speaking to your mind, the natural mind. Now, some have said, well, you know, if it's written in the word, then the Holy Spirit doesn't need to say it because it's already in the word. And if it's not written in the word, then the Holy Spirit wouldn't speak it because it's not written in the word. But this fails to take into account, this type of reasoning, this thinking, fails to take into account that often we need instructions for the very specific details of our lives. Not always are you going to find chapter and verse, chapter and verse, what you should do specifically in every situation. Of course, you have the word to understand the general will of God. Then you have wisdom, which helps to teach you his ways. But then what do you do after that? when you need an ultra specific instruction from the Lord in order to make sure that you're on the right path. That's when the whisper comes in. But don't try, please hear me now. Do not try to hear the whisper if you are not a person of the word. And that's gonna make some of you mad. But it's not my goal to make you mad. I love you. And I wanna just tell you the truth. John 14, 26. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to remembrance all that I have said to you. So the Holy Spirit reminds and he reveals. He reminds you of what has been said, but he also reveals what God is saying. Let me say that again. He reminds you of what has been said, but he also reveals what God is saying. Now, some might ask, does this mean that what he speaks is on the same level of authority in terms of the scripture? No, because he's speaking very specifically for very specific situations and instances in your lives 
in your life. And therefore, that wouldn't be something that could apply to everybody all the time. These these instructions don't have universal application and for all time when it's the whisper as I'm describing it here. So he whispers to your heart, but don't try to live your life by the whisper. And this is what some Christians do, thinking they're spiritual. They think they're spiritual because they kind of say, oh, you know, I just kind of like the wind. I go, I call them hippie Christians. They just, ah, wherever the Holy Spirit takes me, I'm like the wind and... And there's no discipline, there's no foundation, there's no grounding. Everything's based off of their experience, their encounters. They're never interpreting their encounters to the word. They're only interpreting the word through their encounters. Well, this is what it means to me. This is what I feel it's speaking. And that's all I'm telling you. It's, it just means it, it's a lack of maturity in the faith, period. And so we need to come to the place where the word is first and then the wisdom and then the whisper. If you're a person of the word, and you're walking in the Holy Spirit's wisdom, those are your safety nets for when he begins to speak with the whisper. And many believers have this reversed. And then number four, so first it's the word, then it's wisdom, then number three, the whisper, and then number four, wonders. Now this is where you'll see prophecy, visions, dreams, miracles. Guys, we believe in this. These have not ceased. The gifts have not ceased. Prophecy is for today. The spiritual gifts are for today. Miracles are for today. Deliverance is for today. Healing is for today. Dreams are for today. Visions are for today. Supernatural encounters are for today. We can't dismiss this. Why? Because the word tells us so. And so the problem arises though, when you try to live your life by the wonders instead of by the word. Many believers have this reversed. So the word is the foundation. Wisdom is that structure. The whisper of the Holy Spirit is like the drywall and some of the materials that get added onto that. And the wonders, that's like the nice decorations for your house, the furniture, the the extra pieces, if you will. But if you live your life only with the extra pieces, just the wonders, my goodness, you're never going to have a solid foundation. Some believers, they just live by their experience and then the word is an afterthought. That's going to cause you to end up with all kinds of confusion, strange doctrines, confusion, tension, bondage, um, isolation. It leads to all sorts of problems. Anxiety. That's why you start with the word. Then the word produces wisdom. Wisdom causes you to be mature enough to be able to distinguish between the whisper and your own thoughts. And then the whisper helps you to understand and navigate the world of wonders. So the word is first. Don't try to live your life by wonders and the whisper. Start with the word. Build that as your foundation then you'll have the wisdom, then you'll hear the whispers, and then you can have the discernment that's necessary to receive only what are godly wonders. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would begin to cause your people to desire your word. Lord, we repent of any neglect of your word. Help us to recommit to being people of Scripture. Holy Spirit, we surrender to the way that you desire to speak. Help us to not box you in to just what our experiences tell us. But help us, Lord, I pray, to go to higher places by living according to your word. And Father, I pray also for healing, deliverance, a fresh touch of your power. Come on, let's believe for God to touch you right now. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is flowing. Jesus, I thank you for that river of power that's flowing now. Lord, let your power flow out of my hands right through that camera and right to wherever they're watching. I join my faith with that one believing now. And I pray, Lord, that your healing virtue would flow. We thank you, Jesus. Somebody watching right now, believing for healing of asthma, we rebuke it in Jesus' name. Digestive issues. It's a woman with digestive issues watching. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. A shoulder injury. I rebuke that now. Be healed in the name of the one whom I serve. Someone being delivered from an addiction. Someone is being delivered from an addiction right now. 
You don't need to beg. You don't need to plead. There's nothing you need to do but receive by faith. God does not hide your freedom behind ancient mysteries. It's as simple as asking. Receive that now. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. I rebuke that now. Be delivered in the name of the one whom I serve. Alcohol addiction, I break that power in the name of Jesus. Drug addiction, we break it. There's a woman watching me now. Your heart is breaking for your son. You're believing he's going to come back to the faith. I agree with you now in the name of Jesus. Church, just begin to receive. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. Folks. Write your prayer request in the comment section now. We'll all agree together. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, I give you the honor. Wow, there's power flowing such power. Holy Spirit, let them sense your presence in the room with them now. I thank you that your presence and power are abiding in that place. Let them sense the manifested touch of your power. We give you the glory and the honor. Wow. I want you to say it because you believe it. Say, amen. Well, if you enjoyed this teaching, and you think others need to hear it, do me a favor, leave a like on the video. That helps more than you know. Also, if you haven't done so, make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you can continue to receive teachings on the Holy Spirit, prayer, and spiritual warfare, and other topics, of course. I also show live streams of our events that we do around the world where the power of the Holy Spirit moves tremendously. You can sense the glory on these meetings. So make sure you're subscribed. And also take a moment now if you haven't done so yet, please consider right now signing up to becoming a monthly ministry supporter. Look, everything that we do in the ministry takes resources. The video content that we release is free. The events that we do are free. The Holy Spirit School is free. All of that is given freely because freely we receive, so freely we give. There's no gift so small that it doesn't count. And there's no gift so large that we wouldn't know what to do with it. Whether you're giving as an individual, maybe a gift from your heart, or you're giving from your business, a gift from your heart, maybe that's sizable. Everything counts. I challenge you business people who are watching, whom God has blessed, to sow significantly. Again, there's no gift so large that we wouldn't know what to do with it. There's plans and visions that exceed our resources already. So help the work of the gospel. So go right now and name it one more time, davidhernandezministries.com slash partner to become a monthly supporter, davidhernandezministries.com slash donate to give a single gift. And if you enjoyed this teaching, then you will love five ways to sharpen your spiritual hearing.